Satanism. To most, it conjures images of medieval black masses or sinister deeds done for the devil. But simply said, Satanism is the belief that evil is excusable and attaining power to control people and circumstances is desirable. Whether you believe in a literal devil is not important in understanding Satanism's effect on our society. The evidence is in. Satan worship and satanic cults are growing rapidly, and adherents of these ideas are becoming more vocal and more dangerous. These symbols of Satanism are turning up everywhere, on walls, on clothes, on album covers, and even on bodies of murder victims. Law enforcement officials admit that satanic cults operate in nearly every community in America. Young children from Oregon to Massachusetts say they've been raped, tortured, and forced to watch small animals killed during satanic ceremonies. School officials in many cities report high school students are forming satanic groups. A Chicago policeman told us, satanic crime makes gang activity look like a nursery school. During this program, you will see the many sides of Satanism. You'll be shocked. And you may be tempted to turn away in denial of such unspeakable horror. If you think I'm exaggerating, watch closely. Listen to what is being done in the name of Satan. <laughs> On a hot, dark night in the middle of June, it was more than I could stand. Two young kids just making a pact that would bring their lives to an end. You see, they got mixed up with the father of lies, and he took them way too far. And now they're giving their lives as a sacrifice. It's so broken and so marred. Cause they're caught in the satanic ways. And just like a spider, he has trapped them. They try to run and break free, but to no avail. The darkness of Satanism is spreading rapidly today, especially among young people. We see the graffiti symbols everywhere, the evil influences bearing down on teenagers, in the music, and in their lifestyles. The dimensions of this phenomenon have become alarming. In this metroplex, uh, it's my estimate that there's approximately 40,000 practicing Satanists in the metroplex. That does not include pagan organizations, druids, wiccans, which are of the uh, right-hand path of witchcraft, not the left-hand path. Dabbling in the occult and its various aspects in this metroplex would have to be over 100,000 individuals. Now, that's a conservative estimate. It's not going on in the schools to hear them tell, you know, they're wearing blinders. It's hard to get them to realize it's going on. Some some te the teachers are more cooperative because they will call if they find notes or they hear something going on they will call us our department is getting more involved in the last eight or nine months because we've been getting calls from people that said we didn't know who to report these things to there was like seven or eight large dogs dobermans shepherds that had been killed and hung in a circle their heads cut blood drained and the guy said, well, that happened six months ago, but we didn't know who to report it to. Eighty-five percent of the teenagers in high school in Western Europe have been exposed to hardcore Satanism. That's an unbelievable figure. Here in America, I do not believe those figures are that high, but I would venture to say that uh, 40 percent of the kids most teens involved in Satanism are dabblers. They wear the clothes, try a few rituals, and listen to the heavy metal bands. But some go further. This shopping mall in affluent Westchester County, New York, exemplifies how easy it is for children, or adults for that matter, 
to get their hands on satanic material. We stress it's perfectly legal, and these are typical commercial outlets you'll find just about anywhere. Three stores side by side, a bookstore, a music store, a videotape center, each offering seemingly harmless types of entertainment, like movies. Here at the neighborhood videotape store, take a look at the number of movies that involve Satanism. Most were popular films in their day, but even today, if one is inclined to believe in Satanism, it's a way to actually see the devil and perhaps be inspired. It wasn't that a demon jumped out of the TV and grabbed me by the face and dragged me down the road and forced me to join the Church of Satan. It was just that there were certain things in this program that piqued my interest, and then I decided to study more on my own. And, and if, dev if the devil has PR, then it is, you know, cinema. Then there's also the satanic literature, which includes many books that are sold in many bookstores. Librarians point out that they're among the most popular books on their shelves. Here, as in almost any bookstore, you'll find both the satanic Bible and its companion, the satanic rituals, a step-by-step -step guide to performing evil rites. Kids get their ideas, especially their psychological uh, pumping up, so to speak, from the literature. And the uh, books play an extremely important part. And finally, music, which is found here in the neighborhood record store under the category of heavy metal music. The satanic message is clear, both in the album covers and in the lyrics, which are reaching impressionable young minds. <laughs> And the musical message comes across loud and clear at concerts and now through rock videos. The symbolism is all there. The satanic pentagram. The upside down cross. The blank eyes of the beast. The rebellion against Christianity. And again and again, the obsession with death. According to most groups, it's all done in fun, but according to police, it's having an effect on many children, a growing subculture that mixes heavy metal music with drugs and the occult. When I was brought up, I watched cartoons like Bugs Bunny, uh, Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, I mean, Elmer Fudd, and all of the Looney Tunes. But today, there's a different kind of cartoon that's coming on our TV sets. And the question is, is there a well-organized plot, an insidious design right now to program and influence the minds of our children towards the occult and witchcraft? We see things like spell books and witches and and zones of eternal evil and all kinds of demons in today's cartoons and we're discussing today with our special guest Phil Phillips and Phil I'd like to welcome hey, you to the program God here. bless you Phil comes from Texas and Phil has been doing a tremendous tremendous intensive study of the cartoons that children view today he's looked at the toys that they're buying in the toy stores at the comic books that they read and he's seen that they vicariously live their lives through the these cartoon characters and toys. Amidst affluence, youth suicide has spiraled, more than doubling in the past two decades. Explore some causes and cures with your hosts, the Peters Brothers, Dan and Steve, authors of the best-selling book, Why Not Rock? Hear never-yet-revealed stories and new insights in this investigative report, Youth Suicide Fantasy. gateway activities to Satanism constitute what is known as the fringe level of involvement. The Ouija board is a seemingly harmless object, yet it can cause big problems. Dungeons and Dragons is a fantasy role-playing game that teaches demonology and other occultic themes. Palmistry and tarot cards as methods of foretelling the future have gotten many involved in the occult. Explicit horror films and heavy or black metal rock music are both popular entrances to Satanism. Occultic books, horoscopes, studying ESP or UFOs have led some to a deeper, more deadly fascination with the power of darkness. 
find out for yourself the real reasons your favorite rock group performs. Hear how Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones are moving to control your mind. How David Crosby wants to drive a wedge between your values and those of your parents. How one prominent group sings to make gay people and their lifestyle more acceptable. The Peters Brothers want to show you the truth your local disc jockey is afraid to. He'd lose his job. Why are youth suffering today from a VD epidemic, smoking more dope than ever before, and rebelling against authority? What makes teens commit half of the serious crimes in America, like robbery, rape, and grand theft auto? Could it be their music? How about you? Are you being cleverly manipulated by secret messages rock musicians hide in their songs? You're about to find out that everything your mother told you about rock and roll is true. When the sleepy town of Mill Basin is invaded by a sleazy band of hard rockers, the self-righteous townspeople try to stop their concert series. And now we find that disciples of the devil are invading our town and threatening to steal our children away from us. When the band finally overcomes parental objections, a town full of normal Midwestern kids begins to turn bad. Bloodshed, riots, and horrible mass murders assail defenseless Mill Basin. I love you, Dad. These kids turn into monsters right before your very eyes. The special effects are fantastic. In the beginning, Satanists will entice a recruit with these three promises. Power, drugs, and sex. Most teenagers recruited into Satanism are boys, drawn by the violent images and rituals, and by the fear they can cause in others. Yet without heavy involvement in drugs, most of these recruits would not be able to go on. Most of the time, like I said, there's drugs involved. Just because you're taking drugs does not necessarily mean you're into Satanism. But nine times out of ten, Satanists are into drugs. Right here where it says put one slice, we heard, I am the devil. Uh, what kind of voice did the devil have? Um, a, a very low voice, I'd say, sounded like Eli Wallach. Have you saved any of this satanic toast? Yes, I did save it because I wanted to be sure that somebody else would see it. Now this one, can you see that, Richard? Satan lives. Uh, just terrible. Is the toaster still possessed? I, I, we're, we still have trouble off and on with it, yes. Oh, see, now it's... It seems to be aware. I. Oh! Oh! Why have you kept this toaster? Well, Richard, you know, when all is said and done, it makes good toast. For today, Boyd Matson, NBC News, Boca Raton, Florida. When I was a practicing occultist, it, oftentimes I would come into this park and uh, practice on various different holidays, uh, lunar holidays and occultic holidays, and we'd actually have rituals in the park when we didn't have a space to do rituals indoor. Uh, so what I'd like to do is take you into the park and just kind of show you one of the places that you would start asking your questions and start looking to see you know, what the occultists are up to. There's two different communities that use this park. Uh, one is the uh, pagan or occultic community, and the other community is, of course, the homosexual community. Interestingly enough, uh, they go hand in hand. And so, well, see, here you go. Uh, upon entering the park, I mean, you can see they've already got started. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a pentacle. The interesting thing about this pentacle is it's an upright pentacle. This is not a satanic pentacle. Now, 
The reason why this pentacle would not be considered satanic is because it has one point up. Now, Satanists would reverse this star, or pentacle as it's called, and have two points up. Those represent uh, the horns of Baphomet uh, and or the horns of Satan. Uh, but now, right over here, I can see on a tree here, there's a, there's a uh, inverted cross. Now this is satanic. This is a very generic symbol. Um, let me see. It's, well, it's actually fairly fresh, too. Um, this here, of course, is a, a bastardization of Christianity, and it's a very common symbol. Obviously, they probably had a party or, or a ritual here uh, within the past night or two. And uh, basically, well, okay, over here, see? Here you go. This, well, see, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, what you're looking at here is called Voodoo Vivi. Um, this is kind of like a coat of arms, if you will, uh, for the demonic. And uh, the implications of this is definitely satanic. Uh, when I showed you earlier the one pointed up star as we first came in, and I told you that you know the implications of Satanism are two points up. As you can see, there are two points up here. And someone has made it very clear uh, they were probably worshiping Set, because it, it says Set here, so it's pretty obvious. Now, this here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, looks like a money VV. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were here in the park doing a money ritual. And uh, this is very typical. This is the kind of thing that you can expect to see uh, not only on crime scenes, but in areas where occultists hang out. Now, what you see here, this is gang graffiti, okay? And this, this is how gangs talk to each other, okay? But now this is how occultists talk to each other. This here is a psilocybin mushroom. So probably um, they had a, a psilocybin ritual, which is not uncommon. Occultists are known for using uh, uh, peyote and, and psilocybin. And uh, so this was probably uh, a, a psilocybin ritual. Okay, here you go. Shem Hemfarash is a satanic invocation, and Halley is also part of a satanic invocation. There is a book out called The Greater Key of Solomon. And in The Greater Key of Solomon, you will see on the seal of Solomon this word. All right, from what I can tell um, from the graffiti and everything that I've seen, and what I see here on the uh, concrete, it looks like they actually have the ritual here. Now, there's an N here for north, and there's an S over here for south. Now, while these are not the true directions, obviously someone had a bad sense of direction, I'm assuming that this is where they actually had their ritual. One of the reasons why they would use this particular area to have a ritual is it is on concrete, and it's a nice open area. When we used to come up and uh, have rituals, and we had a group, we would look for an open, flat space. This is an open, flat space. This would be an ideal place for them to have a ritual. Um, now, if I was a solo occult practitioner, I might do it in placing a cat or a dog. Of course, animals move around a lot and they get unruly, so they would tie it up. But there is blood all over this particular noose. Now, these are the kind of things that you'd be looking for. What we have here is a medicine bottle of 2% xylocaine. For those of you with medical knowledge, you would know uh, xylocaine, known as lidocaine, um, is a numbent. It's, it's used to numb uh, people, and for that matter, animals. And of course, if you're going to ritually sacrifice an animal or a human, for that matter, in a public place, you don't want them to be screaming in pain. Um, so it's not uncommon for occultists to use something like this. And of course, here we have it. On this tree here, we have some more graffiti. It's in red, which is a classical um, satanic color. Now what's interesting here is the number nine. Nine represents the nine satanic statements. You can find this in uh, a book by Anton Sanzer LaVey, which is called the Satanic Bible, and you will see that there are nine satanic statements. This is uh, the way occultists tell each other, hey, we're Satanists.
Dungeons and Dragons has been called the most effective introduction to the occult in the history of man. It is a fantasy role-playing game that teaches demonology, witchcraft, voodoo, murder, rape, blasphemy, suicide, assassination, insanity, sex, perversion, homosexuality, prostitution, Satan worship, gambling, barbarism, cannibalism, sadism, desecration, demon summoning, necromantics, divination, and many other occultic themes, all in living color. Is this dangerous? You decide. Your dungeon master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. Your skin grows cold from your first glimpse of the enormous beast. It's a product of your imagination. Survival depends on a quick, decisive move. Your choices are limited. Stand and fight, or run. Use your lightning bolt. Victory is yours. Win the treasure. TSR Hobbies. Dungeons and Dragons games. Products of your imagination. Uh, I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is a direct uh, quote from the pit of hell, if you want to call it that. Uh, it is a mind-bending game, a mind-changing game. It is involved with all kinds of occult and pagan religion. The player's handbook includes over 160 pages of spells to be cast. Let's look at one of the handbooks here. This is the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Monster Manual. And it's full of monstrous figures and actually those creatures that the children can m imagine. And yes. children's imaginations are very active, aren't they? Yes, very much so. Now let's look at another one of these. This is where we go into the Dungeon Master's Guide. Who is the Dungeon Master? Well, the Dungeon Master is a person who plays God in the game. And, uh, and he controls all the situations. In fact, the books tell him that he is, he is the God of the game. And, uh, and he controls the situations in the game, controls the way the players are moving through the dungeons. And then, uh, then if he doesn't like someone, he can play pretty much against them. Do you think parents are aware that when the children play the game that demon spirits are involved? I do not think that many parents are aware of what's inside the game. In fact, in my presentation, I show many pictures from the inside of the books just to show the images of this game. I yes. mean, the gruesomeness of this game and the occult link to it. Well, I know that when uh, I did my message, and this has happened, I have letter after letter where people took the pieces. Now, there's sixes involved in the pieces of the game, but they yes. take the pieces of the game, they would throw them in the incinerator or the fireplace, and screams would come out because there seemed to be some kind of spiritual forces inhabiting those pieces, and children would drop out of life. They didn't want to study anymore. Uh, what, what are the pieces, for instance? Well, this game affects the most intelligent of our children. And the pieces include white witches, wizards, necromancers, the, the clerics, that type of thing. It includes evil wizards. It's a white versus black witchcraft. The good versus evil is white versus black witchcraft. And Anton LaVey, the writer of the Satanist Bible, says there is no such thing as white witchcraft. Well, being and, a Satan worshiper, he should know. Yeah. Halloween is manipulated by the promoters of horror movies and videos as a major marketing opportunity. While horror films used to be synonymous with B-movies and considered the conventional low-budget industry standby, today they account for nearly 20% of all of the revenue received by feature film producers and distributors. The success of the technical revolution in special effects has attracted serious film directors to produce well-crafted, elaborate horror productions. A recent visit to the Video Software Dealers Association exhibition in Las Vegas showed that the two biggest selling artistic genres were pornography and horror. Hollywood is continuing to capitalize on society's growing craving for the occult and demonic. The irony is that while these producers label such films as fun and make-believe, many of them hire practicing witches or Satanists as technical advisors who ensure the authentic reproductions and performances of rituals, sacrifices, spells, and curses.
people like are are so hyper during the day they need to come home and watch something that's like totally unreal so they can release themselves from all the pressures it's just the type of thing that makes you laugh and forget about life over the last two decades, most horror films have become far more graphic in their depictions of violence and cruelty. Movies affectionately known as splatter films routinely detail torture and dismembering of bodies, drinking of blood, cannibalism, rape, and a host of other grotesque atrocities. Well, we think it's pretty fun. A lot of people just like it because it's fun, it's wacko, it's not real, and so it's just the type of thing that people like to watch because you don't have to think reality when you watch it. Most of these films receive R ratings, which mean that children under 17 cannot view the film or rent the video without the accompaniment of an adult. Yet this precaution is seldom enforced. For 15 is the average age of those who see these films. While many producers claim that these gruesome spectaculars are merely fun and not dangerous to the psyche of our youth, many of the scenarios from the horror films are duplicated in copycat crimes which make for sensational headlines. Wake up, sleepyhead. It's body time! Rock and roll will never die. At least not this Halloween. I've heard of raising spirits from the dead by incantations, right? Yes. I did that by playing a record backwards. Are you kidding? Sammy Kerr. He's a rock and roll nightmare. I am a big fan of yours. I've got all your records. Shut up! And they is you. This message is meant for me. How can you listen to this stuff? What have you done to your stereo? I wanted a new one. Sammy Kerr. His fans won't let him die. He won't let them live. You should be loyal to your hero. Make it turn on you. We better check out the party punch. Glenn, you've now been a Christian for some time. What is your reaction when you see Halloween celebrated by people? Whenever Halloween time starts coming around, about the 1st of October, you go into the stores, you see the costumes, you see the, the mother with her little girl, putting the witch's hat on her and the little boy getting excited about getting the devil mask and you see the candy, you see the Halloween pumpkins, you see people decorating their houses with skeletons and all these symbols of death. You know, it only serves to bring back horrifying memories to me. Memories of death, memories of children being so abused, so ripped of everything, their character, all in the name of Satan. If a person could really stop the next time they go into that store and realize that there are children who are going to lose their life because people are taking this a step further. There are people out there who don't just celebrate Halloween with trick-or-treat candy. This is a religious holiday to them. This is something that is holy and sacred, and they are taking innocent human life. I can't say, go ahead and have Halloween fun. It doesn't matter if you're participating in Halloween, even if you're not a Satanist, you know, if it's just for fun. No, because these Satanists are using this as a smokescreen. Glenn, you said that Halloween is a religion of Satan. 
What do you think when you see churches and Christians celebrating Halloween? It makes me sick that, I, that the Church of Jesus Christ would take on this horrible demonic thing that is happening in our world. Christians should be the ones who are standing up against this. Christians should be the one who are saying these terrible things are happening and we want to stand against this. this churches should not be having these Halloween parties at all. They should be coming together as brothers and sisters in Christ, binding together and coming against these dark forces, praying for these children that God will spare their lives. The program is Youth Alive. My name is Mike Warnke. And if you're not watching at 11 o'clock on Saturday mornings, Reuben and Rudy on Youth Alive, you're missing a real good opportunity to get some questions answered that I know that you have. I shifted into neutral sometime when I was 15, so I know how you feel, even if I look older now. And besides, he's cute. Channel 19, don't yeah. miss it. Don't miss it. What could we call uh, something like Smurfs? Is there anything occultic or dangerous about Smurfs? But there are some things about Smurfs that we need to look at. First of all, you'll notice that they're depicted as blue with black lips. Well, isn't that interesting? And you know what happens to you when you die? You turn blue and your lips turn black. In other words, these are depictive of uh, dead creatures. Right. And another thing is that Smurfs is an all-male community. And you say, oh, there's Smurfette. She's a female. Well, in one cartoon, she was depicted as transforming from a male to a female through magical power. And so the only female in the Smurfs is transformed from a male. She was not born a female. Now, what you're telling me then is that even Smurfs carry a homosexual connotation in that most of them are male. I believe so. But we're not going to blatantly say that Smurfs are evil. We're just saying that they have all of these overtones that are leading that direction. Well, let's take another look at Smurfs. Because the Smurfs cartoon, the whole uh, storyline, is that the Smurfs get in trouble. And every time they get in trouble, they run to Papa Smurf who whips up a spell or an incantation to get them out. In fact, he said the name Beelzebub numerous times in the cartoon. And he whips up this spell, spell or incantation and and draws them out of their problems You're through kidding. witchcraft. And then they have an enemy called Gargamel. Now Gargamel, in a recent episode, I saw him draw a five-pointed star, the pentagram, on the ground. Right. He lit candles at each point, which is an actual witchcraft practice. He started to dance inside the pentagram, chanting a magical chant. At that point, a book opened up across the room, and something left the book and entered his physical body. Body, giving him power to levitate and to to do battle against the Smurfs. Oh no. So so we can say that Smurfs has gone occultic. Are you ready for Truth About Rock? Truth About Rock, the rock music seminar that has swept the nation. The Peters Brothers seminars and bonfires have drawn press attention from coast to coast. Watch as they expose the flip side of the rock industry, the world of double meanings and double standards, backward masking and backward morals. Over $5 million worth of rock and roll has been burned after these seminars. Don't miss Truth About Rock. Drugs, sex, power. These are the enticements Satanists use to lure teenagers. Another is music, specifically heavy metal or black metal. I think music has always been a powerful media, all the way through. I mean, music was important to you and me, and, and it's important to the teenagers today. And we're not anti-heavy metal, but we're anti the heavy metal message that is causing death and destruction. And the symbols that they're using are so blatantly occultic um, that it's very difficult for us to overlook that kind of thing. For instance, if we take uh, the album uh, cover from Slayer's album, Rain and Blood, uh, it depicts a message to young people that maybe consciously they don't receive, but subconsciously they're receiving this message. On the front of this album cover, uh, Satan is depicted as a goat, which is very familiar to the Satanists. They know that that would be the goat would represent Satan. And he is seated on a wooden throne. And the wooden throne is being supported by two people. Now, in the hand of this goat is a decapitated head. 
And of course, we're finding decapitated bodies all over America, and um, that is a common way for a Satanist ritual to occur, is to do the decapitation. That is blatant uh, evangelization and propaganda being, sh being shared with uh, thousands of young people through music. I think the greatest tool to desensitize America has been uh, media in general, whether it is television, whether it's toys, games, or whether it is music. They all have played an important part. They all carry a message, don't they? Absolutely. And of course, in the life of a teenager, the two single most factors that we see um, is music and a game called Dungeons and Dragons and then of course trailing very closely behind that and vying for the position is the amount of occult information that is put out through um, the videos the movies the TV shows we went into a very small store David this was I mean maybe as big as we're sitting here this was a small set we found a hundred and nineteen videos on the occult in one small store. And we have a video in America that is on our shelves that has been banned in 46 countries. And it was so popular it has Faces of Death, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in that video, it shows everything that is gruesome, grotesque, everything that you would never want to see or hope your child would never see in the way of death scenes, including some decapitation occult rituals. Parents should be alert to the warning signs that show their kids are involved in the cults. Besides the music, there are the clothing, jewelry, and symbols used. There is the classic pentagram, worn inverted by the Satanist, the broken cross or peace sign, the inverted cross, the horned hand sign, the goat's head, the 666 sign, and many others. In addition to symbols, watch for involvement in occult games like the Ouija board or in dark role-playing games. Well, Skeletor lives in Eternia with He-Man. Now, Eternia is a good world that they live in, and we'll, we'll see some things about Eternia a little later on. Now, who lives in Snake Mountain? Well, Skeletor lives in Snake Mountain. Could we talk about Snake Mountain? For sure, let's minute? take a look at it. Now, we, we have a toy that we got at the store, which is uh, called, simply, Snake Mountain. I thought I'd get this toy up here, if we can get that on the screen. And uh, here's the snake and all. I mean, this is definitely an occultic toy. And it's got an interesting little feature here. I'm going to turn it on. It can actually transform your voice from uh, your regular voice to that of an occultic hero. Is that yeah. correct? So let's get a Skeletor type of voice. Let me turn this on here. I, I think I'm getting it too loud. Skeletor, the master of the universe. Does that give you kind of an example of... Uh, yeah, you should see the commercial they play with it. You know, it transforms your voice into that of an evil So you know, little voice. children would little children would actually use that to even identify more with these occultic heroes, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But one of the games that we looked at, and I guess this is one of the hottest items, we shopped all over southern Ontario here yes, trying to find right. a copy. We had to go into upstate New York and found a store. We called them at five o'clock at night. They had ten games left. We thought, well, we'll go pick them up in the morning. We went over the next morning at nine o'clock and there were three left out of ten. This thing is really moving. At the beginning of this entire presentation, this report, the Not Just Fun and Games report, I started out by making the statement that now there is a fear in children where they used to talk about Barbie or Ken and building a little home or they had their teddy bear that they would cuddle up to. Right. When we talked to children they were talking about fears and deaths and graveyards. This kind of thing has to have a big influence on it. Absolutely. This is called Nightmare. It's a new game, as you mentioned. It comes with a videotape. And in that sense, it's a very unique concept, at least as far as I know. Just why don't we, before you just talk about the game, let's roll a clip out of this video to show people what it is that comes into the home of the people who buy this game. And they say to play this tape on the loudest possible volume. Is that not In right? fact, they suggest if you can put your television through the stereo to do that. And turn out all the lights. Turn out all the lights. Make this as loud as you can make it. Right. Let's take a look at that. Stop! Whose turn is it now? Answer me! Dios Camancio! Answer me! I like scum. Tastes great. 
Now roll the dice, you scum-sucking maggot. Roll it four times. And if the total you roll is an even number, then it's time to get even with you. You're banished! But if it's odd, you will receive a key. You have lost. This is the end of my game, but just the beginning of your nightmare. Wow. Well, Chuck, it's no wonder kids are scared. This is not some furry little animal to cuddle up with at night. They've got to be terrified when they're done playing this game. Sure, especially when you consider the fact that the lights are all off and you're playing this as loudly as you can play it. An interesting thing is that this game is recommended for people 12 years and up. And yet there's a disclaimer on the box that recommends parental guidance for persons under 15. So sort of a contradiction there. They're, they're warning you that it can be scary. Another game we should mention is called Hero Quest. Uh, this again is, is all sorcery and magic and witchcraft, no positive influences at all. In fact, there's cards that come with the game. They are spell cards, air spells, earth spells, fire spells, and so on. This is witchcraft, plain and simple. And it's teaching kids how to get involved in this kind of thing. Uh, whether it just sparks that interest that causes them to get more and more involved in the occult, and that has happened many, many times. Mm -hmm. Or, as you said, it's just not a good influence. It's giving them nightmares, it's scaring them, and it's easy to see why. Well, and if you take a look, I hope we're getting a good shot of this. It looks like a good part of this is taking place in a graveyard. There's crypts and so on, and we have all of these different things going on. The thing I want to point out here, and we really, I guess, have to start to wind things up in a hurry. When we were kids, we'd see our baseball stars or our football stars, our idols. And we would see them and we'd want to emulate them, so we'd go buy a baseball bat or a football and begin to learn how to do what our idols did. The idols this generation are being raised on are totally different. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I know you've addressed that already. Um, the other occult influences that they see, they see it on the cartoon and then they go and their game reinforces them how to act these things out, how to actually cast a spell. That's right. Satanists entrap young people in several ways. At sex parties, they take snapshots of their victims for use of blackmail, or they'll involve the unsuspecting victim in their darkest rituals, perhaps animal or human sacrifice. They will get the teenager to offer his blood or even a finger to Satan. Blackmail and even outright threats keep a teenage victim in line. Some victims see suicide as their only escape. The tragic legacy of Satanism. What is Christian thrash? It's punk rock and heavy metal combined, all in the name of Jesus. Here's what goes on at Christian thrash concerts. We're going to take a listen to a song by Christian thrash group Vengeance. <laughs> Now anyone with an ounce of sense and two brain cells knocking together knows that junk isn't Christian. Do you want to know what the lyrics were? I want my head chopped off, you'll see my body rot, and then I'll reign with Christ, and then you'll fry. There's nothing Christian about Christian rap, Christian rock, or Christian thrash. As you've been watching today's shocking interview, many of you may want to share this message with family and friends. Evil powers are trying to brainwash this generation of children, but the truth will set them free. You can take that truth to them. Let's pray that churches across the nation will rise up and expose this deception of a generation.
Today's interview includes materials taken and now offered in three cassette messages. The cassettes include Spiritual Warfare in Your Child and Deception of a Generation, both by Phil Phillips. The third cassette is titled Dungeons and Dragons by Gary Greenwald. As a bonus, the Eagle's Nest is including the book Breaking Spiritual Dullness and Barriers in Children, an outstanding expose of many of the evil deceptions being perpetrated on young people today. You'll also receive Phil Phillips' newspaper titled Child Effects, updating you on the latest occultic attacks on your children. To receive all three cassettes, the book and the newspaper, simply request the Child Deception Offer and send any donation of $15 or more to The Eagle's Nest, Post Office Box 15,000, Santa Ana, California, 92705. Again, request the Child Deception Offer and send $15 or more to The Eagle's Nest, Post Office Box 15,000, Santa Ana, California, 92705. May the Lord bless you and your stand for righteousness. And now back to Gary Greenwald and Phil Phillips. There are some very obvious ritualistic markings that will appear on a body that is the result of satanic killings. You'll note on our model that there's oftentimes a cut that goes from behind the ear all the way down to the throat. You'll also notice that on the carotid, this right here would be cut where the blood would have been drained. And oftentimes there's wax laid on it to cover it up afterwards, after the body um, has uh, deceased. They will also put wax over the eyelids after they're deceased, and so those would be some of the head markings that would indicate a ritualistic killing. Another area that's obvious in these kinds of ritualistic carvings would be the pentagram or the inverted pentagram on the right and the left side of the upper chest. This oftentimes is the signature of the high priest. Another area that you might find satanic ritual carving is in the stomach area. And as was true in the St. Joseph's case, the pentagram or the inverted pentagram was carved right here in his abdomen area. And you'll note again the points representing again the goat's head. Another area we'll want to note is the foot area. And right here behind the ankle bone, there is oftentimes an incision just as our markings would indicate. And beyond that, on the bottom of the foot, they will sometimes cut the flesh and peel it back. And so you'll also note that. Another thing that is oftentimes done in ritualistic homicides is a penis is placed inside the mouth of the deceased person. Now as you look at the body of a person such as this, please note each and every one of these markings. You might just see one of the markings. It could be just the carotid, or it might be just the marks behind the ankle, or as obvious as the pentagram. But whatever it is, if you look just a little bit deeper, ask a few more questions, and note to the investigators more information, it could lead to the solution of other crimes that have been just passively sitting on the desk without any clues. Maybe some of you say, well, boy, I'm safe now. He didn't talk about my favorite rock band. Listen, young person, rock music is not guilty or responsible for all the problems in the world. We think, young person, rock music and your love of it is just a surface issue. The root problem is rebellion. Some of you are rebels without a cause. You don't know really what you're running from, but you know you're not you're going to give in. You're going to keep running. Today we'd like to challenge you too to get rid of your music, get rid of anything that stands between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we'd like to invite you to join the, the hundreds of kids, thousands of kids that have gone home, they've looked at all their materials, they've looked through all their, their record albums and their cassettes, They've talked to their parents and they said, Mom and Dad, do any of these things promote a value system you don't believe in and you don't want me to be a part of? 
We'd like to encourage you to join those kids that have done that and they've burned, broken, destroyed over $10 million worth of stuff in the last few years. It's been fantastic. And then, Dan, it's important too to remember to go out and replace that music with good Christian music. Why not stop by your local Christian record store so you know exactly uh, what's available? Oftentimes they'll even play you some of the demo tapes and records. But choose some good things that are going to edify you. There's a good contemporary Christian sound out there to be sure. Why don't you find some and pick it up? And most of all, we want you to know that we care. We're concerned about you. That's why we've devoted our life to trying to teach the truth about rock. You know, life is exciting. When you commit your life to Jesus Christ, it's exciting when you're living for Him 100%. just arrived. I don't remember seeing you before. How long have you been dead? 